Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to Let's Play Control. Today we're going to get to see some side quests, we'll round out the Eagle Limited AWE portion of the main quest, and we will get to the conclusion of an incredibly well-hidden easter egg with clues that trace back to that backmasked message in the lyrics to take control. And we can talk about that a little bit while we go through what is basically an auto-scroller. Uh, so to recap, that amazing Ashtray Maze segment that we played in the base game, uh, remember we played it to the song Take Control by the Old Gods of Asgard on a tape that was given to us by Ati. Some really clever folks found out that there was a secret message encoded in it. It was backmasked. Uh, so if you play it in reverse, the lyrics, or part of the lyrics become... Landing on the Polar Star and rushing to the Red Room. Um, find the cord to take you to a secret rendezvous. The diamond will tell you where. 1 1971 184919. In their. Hold on. This isn't really that big a deal. In their drunken fever states, see them both profoundly. The pyramid in the stone file becomes a spruce tree. So keep those lyrics in mind. Uh, we'll be back to them in not not that long, actually. We're pretty close to this section. Uh, by the way, if you do a substitution cipher with the numbers in there, where you just replace the numbers with their corresponding letter in the alphabet, it says Asgard is. And the numbers are relevant for another reason we'll get to momentarily. Uh, first, we have a side quest, and we have to banish Hartman. At least from this sector. Where is it running off to now? So, before we pursue Hartman, we're going to come around to the other side of the Eagle Limited train. For a side quest called Dead in Its Tracks. It's a pretty short one. It's not like Swift Moving Platform. So something happened aboard this train, and it's our job to piece things together. There are six objects we can interact with. Each of them tell a different part of the story. Our job is to do trial and error and put them in chronological order. So let's start with the briefcase. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome aboard the Eagle Limited bound for Chicago. Please have your tickets ready and enjoy the ride. Nothing too suspicious yet. Let's go to the conductor's hat. Next stops, Alton, Carlinville, and Springfield. That's Alton, Carlinville, and Springfield. Tickets, please. Tickets. Seems like we have the right order so Good far. Good evening, all you fine-looking folks. Here's some smooth tunes to ease your minds and please your ears as we wait for that delicious dinner to roll right on in. Should mean dinner plates next. Just a normal dinner. Nothing has really popped off yet. So it's either the hammer or the engine parts. And finally. Jesus Christ. Gives us a good idea about what the Eagle Limited AWE was. Excuse me, ma'am. Do you have a ticket? You had a pretty dark ride, huh? But I hope you're done replaying it now. That's so sympathetic and empathetic of her. Hope you're done replaying those dark memories. Hell yeah. Projectile spread minus 100 for shatter. It's not a bad reward. You actually get quite a few unique ones uh, for side quests in this, which I definitely prefer to just stronger or better rarity ones. It's not the only completely unique mod we're going to get today, or even in the near future. So we have a brain cloud stalking the shifted corridor. 
Uh, we need to get up to the offices. Ah, oh, the shaded specimen. Just giving us a little bit more on Emil Hartman, how he got there, and who was dispatched to monitor Bright Falls in Cauldron Lake. By the way, what kind of tree is this? Uh, I'm curious for a particular reason. Is it a... I, I don't know what a spruce tree looks like. Uh, so here, where the portrait is hanging, you want to melee this. You want to melee it because you can bust open a hole in the wall to reveal a secret location. Uh, and you can then follow this further up to something even more secret and pretty disorienting. An office room tipped on its side. Oh, such a cool effect. Always glad to see more of this in control. Just a launch speed boost. But, on the radio, we hear, take control. So about those back mask numbers I was talking about. Uh, they are not just code for Asgard is. They also correspond to an analog clock face. 1-19-7-1-18-4-9-19. On a clock, that would translate to 1-19 o'clock or 1900 hours is 7. 1-18 is 6 o'clock. 4-9 and 19 is again 7 o'clock. 1-7-7-1-6-4-9-7. So on the last digit, I let it loop too far, so I have to start over. So again, that's one, seven, seven. One again. Six. We'll let it loop all the way back to four. Then nine. And seven one more time. So one seven seven one six four nine seven. Landing on the polar star. Rushing on to the red room. Once we're in the red room, uh, we have a very small fight in cramped quarters. But luckily it's not against any kind of real dangerous enemies. Just mostly standard hiss grunts. A couple of them, most of them shielded, but very easy to deal with. Especially since I've gone back to my good old buddy Shatter. I don't know if there's one lingering around or if I'm waiting for the next wave to spawn. There you are. Now I think the second and final wave is on its way. We're gonna let him come down to us while we clean up the others. And then, hmm, let's actually pursue him. I think we can fight him in a pretty good spot on the stairwell. Oh, he's retreating a little. He didn't like the pressure. Now with that done, what were some of the other lyrics? Oh yeah, find the cord to take you to a secret rendezvous. Gonna go right down to room 226, where Take Control is once again playing. We're on the right track to follow these clues. And we get the personal mod aerobics and something pretty cool. The Valhalla Nursing Home. Founded in 2000. The Valhalla Nursing Home. 
founded in 2014 for Odin and Tor Anderson of the Old Gods of Asgard fame for their twilight years. Built after the return comeback tour, Flip Flop to be their farewell tour. Cut short, canceled, to the chagrin of their agent Barry Wheeler. Wheeler had managed to coax a couple of hit songs out of them before that. Balance Lays the Demon, a couple of others, three massive stadium sized gigs. The old men rocked like they were possessed by the devil. Like their namesakes, the backstage parties got out of hand. The air was thick with smoke. Wheeler squinted, his migraine flared. Booze and drugs, a rock and roll cliche. They ran off after every gig. Wheeler had security track them down to the craziest after parties. The Andersons were so old. Vampires, princes of fucking darkness. After every gig and the rampaging party that followed, it took them weeks to bounce back. And they never did completely. Each time, Wheeler expected them to croak. It was that bad. After the third gig, Wheeler couldn't take it anymore. Couldn't stomach the idea of another client dropping dead on him. Wheeler canceled. Called it off. It was over. After the Old Gods comeback tour was canceled, Wheeler set up a foundation with the money from the record sales of the Greatest Hits album, and the gigs. A lot of money. Wheeler was good at his job. Wheeler set up the nursing home facility. The old men deserved it. I love that, that we get more on Barry and we get the fate of the old gods of Asgard. For their twilight years. And what happened to them? Oh man, that's so good. We even get to see how Barry grew as a character and how uh, the loss of Alan Wake affected him. Damn, that's great. Now, the last part about the pyramid and the spruce tree is still open for debate. Uh, it's metaphorically talking about the board in the oldest house, you know, the pyramid in the spruce tree. We've gotten a lot of allusions to the oldest house being a tree uh, throughout the main game, throughout the foundation. And then there was Ash and Ash's dad. Uh, so that itself may be a reference to the house, uh, to House of Leaves and the Navidson house on Ash Tree Lane. This tells us that the board may have taken over the oldest house and shaped it to its own whims against the oldest house's will. That's the metaphorical reading, though. What people aren't sure about is whether or not that has any deeper ties to the puzzle or the Easter egg. It could be that there are still more secrets to discover from that. It's hard to say because Control has a, an immense amount of very well-obscured, almost ARG-esque secrets. Uh, there's a huge one that I think was recently unraveled from the Foundation DLC. Uh, there's the luck and probability thing from the base game. And there's a bunch of other secrets, so there's at least a small chance this isn't fully solved yet. That's really exciting. I love the open-ended possibility that there's still more mystery to be found, and that people are going to be hunting for it for a long time, whether it exists or not. Like the, uh, the so-called final secret of Shadow of the Colossus, or Bloodborne's Tomb Prospectors. God, I think that's amazing. Just the, the journey and the search for that stuff. And how compelling it really is. Uh, so here, we're going to get four waves of enemies. Each one is going to correspond to one of these towers. Uh, and nodules of his corruption are going to be present on one tower for each wave. So you have to shoot them to lower a barrier so we can get each one of the batteries so we can turn the lights on in the room and deal with Hartman in here. If we linger too long in the dark, uh, it's going to be bad news for us. Hartman is going to, I, I don't know if it's a one-hit kill, but he does have a grab attack where he teleports next to you and just messes you up. Oh shit. So it's one telekinesis and then, holy shit, he chunked me down. Uh, uh, 
this might actually be a really good time to put our new aerobic mod on that we just picked up for doing that uh, Easter egg. The aerobic mod heals you a little bit every time you evade. Uh, I think it says healing t health recovery on evade 10. I don't know what that means in terms of the health bar shit. That's not a lot. Uh, so we're going to grab this and then make a break for it. Boom, boom. I don't know what happened there. Hmm. <laughs> I guess Hartman killed me, but I didn't even see anything happen. I just touched the floor. Okay, I think I'm going to be able to grab this second power cell more safely than I did before. I got shot down by just the weakest enemy so fast. And then Hartman, I guess, finished me off with a projectile. Yeah, the grab is not the only danger that Hartman presents when you are all alone in the dark. Also, it's also uh, making these enemies seem a lot scarier than they should be. Holy shit! Oh god! Yeah, he's a teleporter. You have to really watch how and where you're fighting things. It's good that there is an enemy like this, though. Like, Hartman is a good horror enemy. And he has a sick design. I still love it so much. Hartman is very good at making you... Yeah, that must be what hit me, that projectile. Uh, Hartman is very good at making you afraid of the dark. And then each time you grab one of the cells, the light on the tower goes out, so you have to hightail it out of there. Okay, last one. I don't want to linger around in the dark too long, but... Oh, God! Okay, we're good. Gotta be a little careful here. And I don't think there's another enemy, so... Hopefully we're good. I'm gonna have to be way jumpier on the shield button if I start hearing more gunshots. Okay, now we just dash for our lives. Ooh. Come on. I think I got stuck on Hartman who teleported next to me for a second. We are good to move along out of the Eagle Limited AWE area uh, through here. We get back to the transit uh, section where this turntable was, and we can hang sharp left to get back to active investigations uh, where that elevator was. And this will take us back down to that hub area between... Uh, Frau Maro and Eagle Limited and Bright Falls. It's just nice to have someone to talk to, you know? Yeah, more Langston. Ever since I got put in charge of the Panopticon, people treat me different. Like I'm Wait. crazy for wanting to work with altered items. This is the first dialogue, isn't it? don't understand the altered items like I do, you know? I don't want to brag, but it does take a very empathetic mind to connect with the items. Doesn't Still, want I don't to brag. Yeah. So right. I mean, the teams in research handle oh, no. natural materials every day, and no one thinks they're weird. Well, maybe that's not true. Darling is famous for being a bit out there, but... I'm doubting myself weird, now. Like, is this... Is this the one? really aren't that frightening once you get to know them. If you figure out what they like or don't... No, this is definitely the first know, one. If he starts talking about his cat... Then to worry about. Or the neighbor. I guess at the end of the day, we're still just wild animals scared of our own shadows. We're supposed to be on the same team, but yeah, ah, oh, damn it! I really hope by time we we get to the elevator to the next part, he's got his new dialogue. So 
because Langston has a couple of these of these long monologues, and I love them all. Oh, I don't know why the second one's not playing. Oh, no. We have to hear it. The second one's really good, too. Plus, it relates to some things that we talked about in 26 and 26 Dash 2. Let's take the elevator down and see if this picks up um, where he should, where his lines should be. Or maybe he won't talk at all. I'm going to be so sad if we miss this Langston monologue. Oh, no! Uh, either way, we can come back here. I forgot to come back to this little corner where Shum is. Shim? Shum. Unfortunately, it looks like Shum 2 is out of order. Uh, we're not going to play Shum because, unfortunately, it's not actually a mini game. Uh, crowd control for Shum is just a little horde mode, and if you survive long enough, you get a prize. Uh, deadline is you have to kill 50 enemies within the time limit, uh, and you get... Damn! Oh, no! We might miss it. We might not get it! That's such a bummer. Maybe once we go up to Eagle Limited... Uh, sorry, not Eagle Limited. Uh, Frau Morrow. Come on, please, please, please. He talks about therapy in this one. And his poetry and vending machines. Speak, damn you. <laughs> oh, I guess not. Maybe I can go back and get him to do it. Uh, but I'll mess around with that on my own time. For now, thank you all for watching. Take it easy. Have a good one. an executive because they have the best snack machines. You may think they're all the same because of that plain white packaging, but there's a difference. You know those thick ruffled potato chips? They're my favorite. All the machines outside executive carry those flimsy little thin chips. They have no texture. I may as well eat cardboard. He's anyway, really I get back to the elevator and they issues, tell me the sector huh? is being evacuated. They wouldn't even let me go back in for my stuff. Can you believe that? I worked at that desk for years, I had photos on it. My favorite stapler, one of those good ones that could staple a 50-page report, no problem. A little cash and some uh, personal recordings. But uh, yeah, they locked the whole area down tight, no one in or out, and then they march us all back to executive to interview everyone. I wasn't even there when it happened, and they were asking me if I noticed anything suspicious, if I saw anyone tampering with the containment cell and so on. Well, the only thing they learned was I prefer the ruffled chips to the non-ruffled ones. Better mouthfeel, like I said before. And then, after three hours of questions, they recommend we all go for trauma counseling. I was like, no thanks, I have my own therapist. I know I could use the word therapist and save a few bucks, but I worry they're going to put anything I say in a file somewhere. A bit paranoid, I know, but I work for a secret government organization, so... Yeah, I stopped going a few years back. To my therapist, I mean. She said that a lot of my issues stemmed from a negative outlook. Of course, I can't tell her anything about what I do, so I just have to sit there and nod. I kept waiting for that big aha moment. You know where I realized that my need for approval stems from my dad or something? Turns out therapy doesn't work like that, so I stopped going. TV really gives you a skewed understanding of these kind of things. She did help me realize that I'm processing stress in an unhealthy way. I try not to carry all that around with me anymore, but it does stack up. Hard to just say no thank you to the anxiety buzzing in your head. One really helpful thing she had me do was find a creative outlet. I started doing some experimental music slash poetry that I think was really ahead of its time. This was years back. I'm cooking up some pretty new sounds these days. Think My Bleeding Clock meets Sylvia Plath. I Do you am play so curious. 
I can see you so being concerned. a guitarist, maybe a bassist. It's funny, I played the tuba in high school band. My favorite was In the Hall of the Mountain King. Tuba didn't get a lot of spotlight in most of the songs Mrs. McKinley chose, but Mountain King was my time to shine. Bum 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 Ah, classic. I've moved on to less mainstream instruments now, but the tuba will always be a part of me. What were we talking about before? Right, the evacuation. Yeah, I heard afterward that the Hartman specimen had gotten loose and killed some staff. They had me digitizing records in some dark corner of the sector, so I didn't know a whole lot about the Bright Falls investigation at the time. It's a strange case. Most AWEs are one and done, but Bright Falls has pretty regular flare-ups. Three incidents since 1970 when we first started tracking it. I got really interested when I heard Alan Wake was involved with the latest occurrence. I'm a huge Wake fan. I love the Alex Casey novels. That over-the-top, hard-boiled detective thing is right up my alley. Wait. They're making a movie of the series. It but can't the guy be a coincidence that I saw him in the motel. In his voice, you know? I was remember he drawn being so here by the investigation? When Wake killed off Casey in the books. It's not a huge surprise, though. Wake sounded like a bit of a dick. Drank too much, fought paparazzi. The tabloids even said he was an abusive husband. So, yeah, troubled artist and all that. Apparently, there were chapters of an unfinished manuscript floating around after Wake disappeared. People say they're cursed, which is a very discriminatory term against altered materials, by the way. The forums all call the unfinished book Departure because Wake kept saying it would be a departure from his previous work. I found some pages that are supposedly the real deal on the internet. It's pretty dark stuff. He was going full horror, which makes sense since he used to write for Night Springs, but I would have preferred if he did something a little lighter. I've always said Wake had a great instinct for humor. Hey, did you know we own Night Springs? Yeah, the Bureau bought the rights after the original series ended. I've sent some story suggestions to the production team, but apparently they are not accepting pitches at this time. Typical. I'd be a great addition to their team, right? Huh. I didn't see you nod. Is this thing not on? Let oh, me check. it's definitely on. Ugh. Okay. Oh, the wire's down here. Huh. Oh, it looks like it should be working. Hello? If you can hear me, uh, shoot something. Uh, that was inconclusive. You shoot so often, it's hard to know when it's intentional. There also could be a delay on this video feed. Uh, maybe the system just needs a reboot. This is a good opportunity to use a restroom anyway. Stay safe, ma'am. Uh, you guys are going to escort me, right? Okay. I didn't know this when passing by, but some of the vending machines in this sector dispense a shitload of loot and some enemies when you shoot them. I believe uh, this is supposed to be a hint. 